We all want to live healthy lives. And of course, we all know that what we eat impacts our health. But what is it that we should be eating and how much? Well, I'm joined today by Dr. Jim Painter, who is going to help us address those questions. Uh, Dr. Painter is a nutrition scientist, so we're grateful to have you here with us, Jim. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. I have so much fun in this little room <laughs> over, the, over the years um, doing things with you. So Yeah, fun. well, great. Well, you know, uh, I'm hearing a whole bunch these days about phytochemicals yeah. and phytonutrients. So what's a, what's a phytonutrient? You know, uh, so I was in school in the 70s, and really by the mid-70s, we knew everything. We had every vitamin, every mineral, every micro, micro, micro mineral. We knew it all and thought, man, this is going to be boring. And then all of a sudden, we found these bioactive compounds. They weren't vitamins and minerals, but they were still biologically active that did good things for a body. And we came up with these phytonutrients. They're not really the nutrients because if you don't have them, you don't get that disease. But things just don't work well if you don't have them. Okay, so they're, they're different than, than vitamins, which right. if you have vitamin deficiencies, right. oh, that's interesting. That can cause diseases. Okay, so then um, you know, what, do, what do phytochemicals, sorry, phytonutrients do for us? <laughs> How do they help us out? You know, they can do a lot of things because when we start looking at our genetics, people are really very different. We're different on the outside. You can see it. But we're different on the inside, too. And that gets down to what the shape of our organs are and the nutrients or the enzymes that we produce and how those enzymes function. And so phytonutrients, we've known this for a while, that they do certain things. And so like um, sulforaphane in broccoli, we've known it was, it was beneficial, mm -hmm. you know. And then resveratrol, we knew it was beneficial. Well, it's, it's an antioxidant. So the first thing people say about it, it's an antioxidant. Oh, my goodness, it's an antioxidant, which is good because mm -hmm. your body is always having these oxidative processes going. You need these antioxidants to quell the fire that comes up when you start having these reactions going on. And so we know, oh, they're, they're antioxidants. Well, they are. But we found out that they're more than that. <laughs> you know, they're genetic regulators mm -hmm. uh, to what's going to turn on and turn off. And so we've seen research on how they affect heart disease and cancer and diabetes. And now we're finding out different reasons why. Yeah. Okay. So, so I mean, this is really interesting to, to think that these materials, that these nutrients that we're consuming from plants, yep. you know, uh, actually are uh, having an impact then on the way our genes are regulated. So maybe give an example or two that, that kind of helps flush that out a little bit. Well, so nutrigenomics is how nutrients uh, affect our gene expression. And so we've got the same group of, of genes in all of our cells, but one turns into an eye and one turns into a tooth. You mm -hmm. know, So that happens early on when we're growing from the first cell and we split into different things. So what is it? Well, how come every cell doesn't turn out the same? C certain things turn on and certain things turn off. And so what does that? Well, I did a little thing here with, with Hugh a while back about vitamin C. Mm -hmm. And so vitamin C is an interesting regulator of which genes are expressed. That's nutrigenomics. Mm -hmm. And vitamin C, if it's not there, then some of these genes that have a promoter region. So whether this gene works or doesn't get transcribed is this promoter region that turns it on or off. And so we methylate these and it shuts it down. And we found out that vitamin C is really important as a regulator of TET, these 1011 uh, enzymes that turn, that actually they demethylate the promoter region. Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden then you demethylate and they start doing this. So if this is, uh, you know, something that has to do with DNA repair and you've got it shut down, then every time you get a problem, it doesn't get fixed. Mm -hmm. And so if we can give vitamin C then, it, which is really necessary to help regulate these TET um, enzymes that, that actually function in this promoter region to determine whether things works or not. Mm -hmm. And so I thought that was amazing because vitamin C is anti-carcinogenic. Why? It's an antioxidant, <laughs> which it is. Yeah. And it works that way as an antioxidant. But it's doing so much more than just yeah. being an antioxidant. It's actually regulating that. Right. So that should make us all think more about eating whole foods. Yeah. So you have white toast and butter and sugar on it and and you didn't get any of those. And yeah. so, okay, what's going to be turned on and off in your body? Just like you need the 
nutrients to build things. You know, you need vitamin D and vitamin C to, to, for your body to function. You need these to determine what genes are being transcribed and yeah. what aren't. Yeah. So how can we ensure that we're getting the, the appropriate phytonutrients uh, in our diet? Yeah. And, you know, this is old advice, and that's eat from the rainbow, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Eat a wide variety. I think about that. Now, I'm a nutritionist. I know a lot of things I should eat. But if I look back at the week, I'll think, darn it, I ate the same stuff this week that I ate last week, and I missed all that stuff. And so eating a variety of foods is really kind of key mm-hmm. so that we have those things flooding in. So you eat, whatever you eat, uh, you digest it, it goes into your blood system, and it just permeates your body. So you've got all these genes that need to be regulated in, in these trillion cells throughout your body, and this is washing over it, turning things on and turning things off. So I think that should really make us consider. You know, it's fine to eat a Twinkie. It's just white flour and white sugar and some coloring. All right, but to be able to give your body these things that regulate your genetics on what's going to actually happen, uh, you need to have whole foods, whole fruits and vegetables and grains. Yeah, so eating a package of M&Ms isn't <laughs> technically eating from the rainbow then, right? Or a package of Skittles, right? <laughs> That's a very good uh, point there because some people go, rainbow Skittles, yes. <laughs> look at all the color. Yeah, when you look at the color in them and they're usually coal tar dyes. It's just yeah. happy. You ever take oil and put it on water and boom, look at that color. Let's get that one and that one and that one. And they put it in food and make it colorful, but it's yeah. mainly coal tar dyes, not the real stuff that's out there. Yeah, yeah. All right, now, um, I've actually seen a couple of articles recently that you can overdo it when it comes to phytonutrients. Uh, what's your opinion on that particular claim that, that, you know, phytonutrients are valuable, but if you go overboard, it actually can, can create problems for yourself? You know, that's very true. Um, but it's difficult to overboard if you're eating foods. The overboard comes when, when scientists go, ah, you know, genistein in soy is anti-cancer. We'll do this, so we pull it out, and then we multiply it a thousand times, and we eat it. Right. Oh, well, now it's carcinogenic. <laughs> well, you know, you don't know. If right. you start pulling these bioactive compounds out of the structure that they were formed in, mm-hmm. then they may, they may work very differently. Yeah. And so I, I tell people all the time, ter- certain um, supplements that are herbal things are fine. You know, and, and they're very beneficial sometimes. And so you, you can get something you wouldn't get normally in the food by taking a supplement, and that's fine. But we have to be careful about <laughs> supplements that have been concentrated that we just take a lot of yeah. because they can end up working in a different way when you take it out of its matrix and you eat it all by itself. It can function differently. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's okay. So. The, the best advice is to do what your mom always said, and that's eat your vegetables, right? <laughs> Isn't that a sad thing? But yes, it really is. And think of how difficult it is to go through the day. And if you have to hunt for vegetables, really, because they're just not there. You, you go to McDonald's and look at all the stuff they have. What percentage of that stuff they have is vegetable uh, besides potato fries and ketchup? Yeah. You know, what, what are the real vegetables? You have a piece of lettuce on a thing and a piece of tomato, you know, but then it's all this other stuff. That's all you got. Uh, it, that little tiny bit is a, is a coloring on the top of the burger. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so uh, how do you connect th- this, these insights to, to your faith as a Christian? You know, I connect it all. I, I, we've been talking a little bit about... Uh, the biblical dietary prescriptions that are back there. Oh, should I do it? I'm a Christian. I don't need to follow the law anymore. Okay, I get that. We don't. And it doesn't give you any spiritual benefit from doing it. But if you look at what he put in the word on the things we should eat back in the beginning, they needed it. You know, Adam and Eve could die if they could figure out how to refine it and take all the good stuff out and kill themselves. They could have done that, but they, they couldn't hardly. They had all of these whole foods. And so, you know, we are fearfully and wonderfully made, and it's amazing how this whole thing fits together, mm-hmm. but it won't work if we don't give it the things that it needs to function. And so where do we get those things? Uh, mainly in fruits and vegetables. You know, meat and dairy and grains, a lot of that we get energy from, which we need, you know, but we really get all of these nutrients and phytonutrients from a lot of the fruits and vegetables. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, you, you mentioned the idea that, that vitamin C uh, can can prevent cancer right? In, and, uh, 
And it's not just because it's an antioxidant, but because it's, again, serving as a key role as a, a gene regulatory agent. You know, one of the complaints that, that atheists level against the idea of God's existence is this idea of we live in a world where cancer is possible, right, <laughs> where cancer occurs. And, you know, why would God create a world, you know, where people suffer from cancer? And, you know, and so one obvious answer, of course, is that, well, you know, cancer isn't God's creation, but rather it's a result of mutational effect, uh, mutations that take place and other kinds of environmental insults, right. you know, that, that cause that which God designed to break down. But it's interesting to me that, that the phytonutrients may actually be part of God's providential care preventing the onset of, of diseases like cancer. You know, I completely agree. We've talked a little bit about the microbiome, that we've got this indispensable relationship that we have with the microbes that are inside of us. We have that same indispensable relationship with green plants that are out there because we don't get energy. I mean, they get the energy from the sun, they lock that energy into a carbohydrate with carbon and water, and they make this carbohydrate, and then we can have access to that energy from the sun that God made. But he set up a system. You know, there's like there's carbon cycles, there's all kinds of cycles, water cycles. Well, we're in cycles too. And so we have to get the things that our body requires to function. Um, from the things we eat. And I think that's just a way that God provided again in, in his wisdom that there's, there's things we need to do to be thriving the way he wants us to flourish. And it really is getting these nutrients that we need. Yeah. Well, Jim, thank you so much. That's been Thanks. very helpful. Uh, if you uh, want to know more about Reasons to Believe, please go to our website, reasons.org, and check out our resources. But make sure when you go to our website that you search Jim Painter because there's a number of great resources that Jim has produced for us, uh, like the one that you're watching today, that can really help you, but also uh, give you, again, insight into God's plan for humanity. And you want to make sure that you check out the article that Jim wrote about vitamin C and nutrigenomics.